uh, are more important than the others and so on. Uh, and ID3 and C4.5 algorithms that uh, help uh, implement what is called OCAMS razor, right? Uh, so that when you have a possibility of multiple uh, hypotheses or multiple trees, uh, you select the one that has the fewest assumptions. And in, in the case of trees, it becomes the one uh, with less nodes. Yeah, so all these are just explanations. Entropy is uh, 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 the concept we use to figure out uh, uh, because uh, we, we want to see how much information is gained by a particular day, uh, decision point. And we choose the one that gives the biggest information gain. Uh, those of you who want can have a look. And there's an example here that uh, says, you know, how it works. Yeah, just completeness, we I have also shown here the confusion matrix, which you should be very familiar with by now. Um, okay, we have two um, uh, issues of um, with uh, any machine learning algorithm, overfitting and underfitting. Underfitting, I think we uh, basically are not in danger of uh, uh, kind of falling into because most people are not happy if the accuracies are kind of low. Right? But overfitting is something that we all always have to be uh, wary of because um, we may find that our we keep improving our model. And last time we discussed this, keep improving our model and in the end then we find that it has over feature to the data. And so I'm, I'm not going to go talk about that again. Uh, there are various ways to handle over fitting in trees like tree pruning and so on. Um, uh, you can have pre-pruning methods and post-pruning uh, and pruning methods. And uh, these are, also standard things, right? Um, right, so uh, uh, generally uh, inexpensive to construct, right? So even the training time is, uh, so unlike the KNN, which doesn't have a training time, this does have a training time, but it's not expensive. Uh, classifying time or predicting time is also good. It's very fast to predict. Um, easy to in interpret and therefore explain, can be used for classification and regression. Disadvantages, uh, uh, the decision boundaries are what are called axis parallel. Um, and if you are uh, unsure, you can just uh, Google uh, uh, decision tree uh, axis boundaries and you will see that the axis boundaries are uh, in fact, sorry, the, the boundaries of uh, decision tree learning are uh, kind of parallel to the axis like this, like to the x and y axis, or however number of axes there are. Uh, data needs to fit into memory. This is of course common with many algorithms. Uh, need to retrain with new data. Um, uh, just a minute. Sorry. Okay, night base. Um, right. Uh, and naive Bayes is basically based on the Bayesian, Bayesian uh, theorem, and that in turn is based on uh, conditional probability, right? And uh, if you write conditional probability in two different ways like this, you can join them and you get uh, Bayes theorem. <clears throat> uh, easy ways to remember is that if you have a probability of x given y, then the other one is probability of y given x. Uh, and the product of that is um, 
in the given part. Right? And the, your denominator is the y part. Right, so I'm again not going to talk too much about it. And, and Bayesian, uh, I mean, this is part of Bayesian statistics as opposed to frequent, frequent statistics is based on, uh, you know, things like maximum likelihood estimates and things. Bayesian statistics is based on this idea of prior and posterior, right? So this Y term, probability of Y term is what we know about the problem uh, beforehand, prior probability. And the X given Y is uh, the, called the posterior probability or once we have evidence about Y, how our X changes, right? So it's very powerful uh, because uh, it, uh, kind of um, corresponds to our intuition, right? We all have a certain um, uh, prior probability. Some people say prejudice or pre, pre, some pre, uh, presumptions or things like that. So um, it can be about virtually anything. But uh, simple thing is, uh, if I tell you, uh, if I give you the word bank, the first thing is like, comes to your mind is that money shop, right? Whereas I may be actually talking about the river bank. So um, we have prior probabilities almost for everything, but given the evidence, if I give you a sentence and the sentence has things about the river and picnic and uh, things like that, uh, then the probability of it being the river bank uh, goes up. Right, so please have a look at this uh, if you're interested to know how this works. So, the work example. Uh, uh, okay, a very important thing is uh, when you do this, there are some, uh, some probabilities that are zero. Um, some of the conditional probabilities become zero, and then since we are uh, our equation uh, is a product of two terms, right? Any single term here becoming zero means the whole probability becomes zero, right? And that's the reason why we need uh, what is called uh, smoothing to, to have some possibility of unseen data being seen. Right? There are like, Add one smoothing, Laplace is smoothing, and various other things like more, more complex things. But uh, this is uh, Laplace smoothing, and it's available on in most. Um, these work examples show that uh, now that probability is not zero. Uh, yeah. And it's used for. I mean, a variety. I mean, all these algorithms can be used for things like text classification, image classification. Um, um, okay, I, I, I think I left this thing biology because I was teaching biology class, right? So uh, uh, there's a graphical way to figure out uh, the probabilities very easily like this, right? So the, the prior, right? Uh, uh, and that is uh, given by these labels and these are the attributes and these are the conditional um, probabilities. And once you do that, you can see that uh, that same example, uh, whether you play or not is dependent on uh, the weather, the temperature, sorry, the, the sky, whether it's cloudy or not, the temperature and humidity, you can attach probabilities to each node like this. Right. Uh, and that makes the computation very, very easy. Right. And, and that's how we think about it. So you can compute uh, the probability of uh, uh, playing some sport or something uh, by computing this. Uh, and so if you want, uh, so this particular example computes that uh, probability for a particular uh, data set here. And here it turns out that um, the probability of uh, 
uh, playing uh, is minus 1.1, not playing is minus 1.7, so uh, it will predict uh, to play. Advantages, um, uh, it's theory-based, right? Unlike k-nearest k neighbor or something, is not theory-based, right? This is theory-based. Uh, if you think about it, decision trees are also not theory-based, right? Uh, <clears throat> well, there's some, some notion of uh, information gain, uh, but this is completely probability theory based. Um, turns out that it's fast to train one scan through the data set that becomes really important, right? As the data sets become bigger, you may have uh, seen uh, the whole idea of YOLO. YOLO means you only look once. Because uh, as you go into deep learning, you see that uh, or any kind of uh, back propagation algorithm has to go through the uh, data points iteratively. <clears throat> Very fast to classify. Uh, not sensitive to irrelevant data. So you don't have to really do feature selection to this kind of algorithm. Uh, and it handles both continuous and discrete data and uh, of course numeric and categorical data. Uh, disadvantage, well, the assumption of conditional independence. Right, given the label, conditional independence often does not hold. Right? Um, it's not about independence of the variables, right, or, or the attributes. Uh, that assumption uh, it doesn't make such a strong assumption, but it makes an assumption that um, uh, one variable, one attribute is independent of the other, given the uh, label given the target period. Uh, so it's a slightly less strong assumption, but even when it is violated, it turns out that NIBASE does pretty well. Right, so these, in, in a way, this is the most important slide, the last slide, uh, after which we're going to do some hands-on. Um, right, so these are the self-assessment questions. I hope you know what is the no freelance theorem. Last time I spent a bit of time, right? Uh, when people started doing all these machine learning algorithms, they were trying to see which is the best, right? And then they found that different things are better for different data sets. And then that made people look for the so called universal machine learning library, uh, algorithm. And the support vector machine was one of the first to kind of try to take that place because using something called the kernel trick, you could make it also uh, handle a non-linear classification, for instance. Um, and then, of course, people realize, no, there are, there are some instances for which a simplest algorithm like this or logistic regression works better than uh, SVM or as well as SVM. Um, and then when people discovered ensembles, Right. Uh, random forest became like almost that place, right? It's going to work in all cases, and then they realize, no, that doesn't. Work. Um, and random forest is based on an idea called uh, bootstrap aggregation. Maybe we will talk a bit about it next time. Uh, and uh, and then uh, bootstrap aggregation. Uh, it was kind of fine-tuned to boosting, right? Bagging was fine-tuned to boosting, and uh, people thought, okay, that is the real final uh, algorithm. And so even currently, most people will straight away uh, apply um, XG boost or something, right? Uh, and assume that, you know, everything else is worse. Uh, but that's what this no free lunch theorem is about. If you don't know this, just type it on Google. Um, what kind of data set does each algorithm handle better or worse? So this is basically the experience that, you know, if you get into some kind of data science job or something, uh, you know, you will start gaining this, right? Uh, there are some general principles, but uh, as you gain experience, you realize, okay, 
uh, for this particular thing, I should use this kind of language. Um, when does the data have to be standardized or normalized, right? So here is obviously the case whenever, I mean, the, the general answer is whenever distance needs to be computed, right? So of the three algorithms we talked about today, there is one where the distance is important. Which one is that? Which algorithm requires the distance to be computed? An I base or KNN or decision tree? Okay. okay, so, so uh, not all uh, algorithms require your data to be normalized, right? Uh, uh, normalized is a general term. If it is numeric, we say standardized. Um, normalized is a bit more generic because uh, it will apply for text and uh, images and things like that. Um, in if you look if you think about it, when we do clustering unsupervised learning, right? Unsupervised means there is nothing from which we can learn. So we have to learn structure from the data itself. And the only way you can do that, if you think about how you cluster some uh, some uh, data, say visually, if you have shown some data visually, how you cluster it is also based on the notion of distance, right? So uh, in, in clustering, it's far more prevalent, common to standardize and normalize. Uh, what hyper, excuse me. Um, yeah, so these uh, really important thing, what hyperparameters can be tuned in each algorithm, you need to figure that out, right? So obviously, uh, if you think about a k nearest neighbor, right, you know that uh, the value k is, is a hyperparameter, right? Uh, or uh, in, in the, in the uh, case of, uh, the distance metric, you can imagine that it's a hyperparameter, you know, you can use um, either Euclidean or Manhattan or Hamming distance or cosine, or, you know, so, so, uh, for text like Levenstein. Um, uh, another thing may be, of course, uh, the smoothing technique, right? advanced smoothing, the classes smoothing for text, things like Nexa and I smoothing and things like that. Uh, the other important thing is how to detect if overtraining has occurred. As I said, if it's underfitting, we don't really worry because we are not going to be happy, right? But when accuracy is very high, we normally kind of I think we are great, right? We are fine. And so how, how do you, what is the, easy, the big telltale sign of overfitting? We already discussed last week, right? So, and that's when your uh, test data, or the validation data gives a much higher error than the, uh, your training error. Not, uh, yes, that the training error. Right. Um, then there are other things before even starting to do the modeling. What about if your data set is unbalanced? Right. Uh, what do you do? So uh, many people blindly apply these things without realizing. So unbalanced will mean in, in the case of binary, 
there's one class has a lot of data and the other doesn't have much. The multi-class, it can be some classes have a lot and some classes don't have, right? And that affects uh, training. So you can imagine, say, if you uh, uh, plot the number uh, and uh, uh, classes, so some have a lot, and some have less, right? Uh, one, one, one strategy, of course, uh, and uh, it's like the obvious strategy. You take the lowest one, right? And cut off everything else to that, right? It seems uh, very obvious, right? Uh, any reason why that's not so good? I mean, it's good in terms of, okay, everything will have be balanced. Your data set is balanced. So you solve the unbalanced data problem. Uh, any reason why that may be not good? There could be a bias in the performance for a specific data, like those with sufficient data would perform better, but with the insufficient data, there would be poor performance since there is not enough data to uh, learn properly. Okay, so um, if I can uh, paraphrase, uh, so let's say this in this. Uh, uh, variable, oh, sorry, this uh, class, there are, um, when you take the whole class, we have a representative data points, but if you cut it off here, it could be not representative, but then of course you can argue and say we will shuffle this and take the, you know, uh, let's say this is 20, uh, we'll take only 20. So you can argue that those 20 are going to be representative, right? Uh, what if I say uh, this is actually uh, uh, 1,000? So if I say this is 1,000, then I'm taking 20. Maybe I can never take 20 that are fully representative. Right? So the fundamental thing is that we have like data set of 10,000, but because one class has 20, we only take, let's say there are 10 classes, we only take 200 data points out of the 10,000 we have. Right? So in other words, we, um, I think the best way is to actually do this, right? do this and see. 
Right? And there's nothing like actually doing it and see. So that you can see, okay, with these 20, I mean, obviously not 20, but say in a, in a data set that you can find, by the way, almost every uh, tool and library have their own data sets, right? So you should be able to play around. Um, rapid minus is data, Orange has its own data, K9, uh, and then Scikit-learn, you know, TensorFlow, all of them have their own data sets. So you can just take a data set that has, uh, yeah, uh, that has unbalance, or you can unbalance it right, by kind of, um, or, or you can just uh, say, right, I'm, I'm going to take only 20. Right? Uh, and then see how, as you increase from 20 to, I don't know, 1,000 or whatever, uh, how the accuracy increases. But uh, you still have this problem of uh, unbalance. Uh, so, so there are techniques right, to um, do the opposite. That is to, um, uh, let's say, sample with replacement and uh, fill up everything uh, up to that level, up to the one that has maximum. Or, in fact, you can uh, do some of both. And you say, okay, I'm happy with 500 each. Right. So you do some undersampling and you do some oversampling. Right. And there are various other techniques right? you can uh, read under uh, how to deal with unbalanced data. Um, and, so, uh, and then the, the other general question to ask yourself is, uh, what are the other algorithms in my tool or library? Right. So in, in, in our case for this first half of this first half of this second half of this course, we are looking at uh, rapid minor, but it can be a, any other graphical tool, right? Um, and this is a URL to the uh, to a uh, publicly available rapid minor book. Right, uh, there are people have written different chapters on different kinds of use cases, right? And, and actually I've taken some of those chapters and I'm giving you as uh, tasks or activities. Right, so we are gonna um, very quickly, those of you who have, uh, um, install, can you please run your I have your rapid minor instance running right uh, let me and I want you to actually do this uh, because I, I, I know uh, now that the time for trying this out in in your uh, in between time is finished, right? So you want, uh, because there is a, a task, a different task for this week, right? So um, I highly encourage you to read this thing, right? Um, and use case here is, um, um, though the, I, I don't like this title particularly, my best classification, it is actually uh, the problem. So there is a little bit, each of these things has a, a little bit of a background, right, for those who are interested in that. But it's about credit trip, credit approval. Is the sound too loud for you? Can you hear me over that noise? Yes, sir. Right, so this is the, the repository and it's good to go there and see so that you understand what the data is. And the very famous uh, machine learning repository called uh, UCI Archive. Um, and this data set has uh, around 700 
uh, examples and some missing values, which is very, very common. Right? Um, and uh, this introduces the main concepts of this particular task, idea of attribute, which you are very familiar with now, uh, and the operators that are being used, uh, renaming, which is a simple thing, but filtering, which can be important, uh, discretizing uh, continuous data, which can be important, uh, and uh, it used to be called X validator, but now it's so. So, since this thing is a little uh, data, this book, right? Uh, you won't find exactly the so there's nothing called X validator operator now, right? Uh, so, you have to figure out what, what it could mean. Uh, and then, performance well, that's where we want to know how well, I mean, basically, what, what our confusion matrix says. And so uh, the entire process is given here graphically, right? But uh, uh, you are trying to do it by following, uh, rather than you know just now. If, if you have, if you see this, it's easy. Just drag this read CSP component, drag rename by replace component, and so on. Combine them, but uh, that's not the purpose, right? The purpose is okay. Um, to understand. So, firstly, we read the CSP. There's a data in, import uh, widget, uh, widget, and uh, you look at the. Uh, it's fairly intelligent to know how to, you know, in a CSV file, how to figure that out. Um, but then we know we want uh, to annotate and uh, set the type of attributes. Right. And we may want to do some pre-processing. Right. So a, a very simple pre-processing renaming attributes because the data set has things like ATT1, ATT2. So if, instead of that, you can make it more descriptive. Right. And uh, this will suggest something, but you can do it the way you want. By the way, don't do exactly what this says. Right. Uh, the, uh, to see whether you have understood something, the best is not to do what, exactly what the tutorial says. Right? So I'm using this more like a tutorial. Right? So don't do exactly that. So this says to make uh, all the ATT things into capital A, can you see? But you do something else. I mean, I don't know, maybe you say attribute is ATT, I may forget what this is. Uh, I want to make it all attribute or Instead of doing all, you can rename one by one you know, uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the relevant uh, uh, title, name, or I don't know, name is not there, but uh, age. Or then uh, filtering missing values, right? So uh, some attributes, A1, A2, and A14, have missing values. And this is one important place. So do you? remove the attributes or do you remove the samples for which these are missing? That totally depends on the number concern that we discussed this uh, last time. Uh, discretize by winning, do you need to do it or not? If there are one, two, three, four, five, six attributes that are uh, uh, numeric. So we need to convert them into bins. Uh, it says two nominal, but it's really two ordinal, right? Because most of these will have order. Uh, okay. After that, so so all that is pre-processing, and then we come to actually a model training, and and the way that uh, this particular exercise uh, does it is by doing all the modeling inside a cross-validating operator. Now, that may sound a bit funny. And uh, in fact, if you look at Orange or K9 or something, that will be done differently. And they may do the modeling separately and then do the evaluation and uh, the uh, training. Right? But in uh, naive base, this is, uh, sorry, in uh, rapid minus, this is how you do it. But inside the uh, cross-validation, you can, by the way, uh, you don't have to do cross-validation, right? Uh, 
Now it's almost becoming the default that you don't have to do it. You can have a train test split and do it, right? Um, and it's inside the cross-validation widget that you actually do your, this define what algorithm you're going to do. But then in this case, it's uh, going to look at naive ways, but you can try the other algorithms also. So this shows how you can do the binning and it shows inside the cross-validation. We will, uh, I will show you this uh, briefly now. Uh, how you define the uh, algorithm here and how you apply the model and how you measure performance. Um, right. Uh, so what this shows is that uh, if you don't, you, you can of course do this without uh, discretization and you can do it without filtering. Right. If you don't do either, I can't remember the accuracy, but maybe it's about 80% or whatever. If you discretize only, it is uh, 84 and a bit more. If you do filtering and discretizing, then uh, it's slight. So you can see the gains are very small and you can say, okay, I don't need to do this. Right? I'm already getting 80%. I, I don't know whether it's 80, but you can, you can check. Right, so let me uh, very quickly uh, My instance, right? Uh, in your case, you will have to. So, how do you do this? Uh, you can uh, see that um, the, the first thing you have to do is to uh, read the CSV file, right? So, you can see, oh my gosh, data access is 58. So, rather than browsing, right, you can browse to see how other than browsing, you can actually uh, start typing here and you can see here now, there are things to read, CSVs, Excel, URLs, blah, blah, blah. Right? So you can either drag it or double check it. Oops, yeah. So um, maybe you can make your canvas a little bigger, right? Um, so now if I click on this, I see the parameters of that uh, component. And obviously the one of the import, uh, you can use the import configuration wizard. I think that's what is recommended, right? Uh, once you kind of know how to do this, you can just straight away go and say, you know, uh, load the CSV file. And by default, the column separator is semicolon, but obviously if it's, uh, CSV usually you need the comma. So a lot of these terms just to be okay. Um, uh, but you can use this uh, uh, configuration wizard and then you can uh, so I, I, by the way, you have to download the, the task one, right? When you download the task one, you will find um, that you have, uh, uh, Let me go to the the place where you downloaded. Sorry. Um, you will have your CSV data file, right? Uh, and when you click next, it shows you what it thinks is the data, right? So obviously if you're, um, so it figured out that the column separate is a comma, 
and not semicolon. And it says, okay, I assume header header row is there. If you if uh, now in this particular case, there's no header row, right? So I need to untick it because otherwise it will uh, assume that this is a header row. Right? Uh, file encoding, right? If it was not UTF-8, you will have to uh, specify it here, right? Uh, uh, whether to use quotes or not for the strings, and things like that, right? And once uh, everything is okay, you can say uh, uh, the decimal character, right, is dot by default, but in other some countries it's comma. Right? Uh, and this says no problems, right? So it, it loaded it fine. Um, and then it says format your columns. So you can, for instance, uh, if there is something uh, that has a date, you can uh, you know, format it in that way. Um, in this particular thing, we don't have any. Uh, you can uh, replace, right? So um, you can have a, uh, all of these have this, uh, uh, I for information. So if you can uh, see whether you want to replace uh, some uh, errors that are, when it says no problems, there's no, no errors. Right, so now um, we are going to um, say the next thing in that was uh, rename by replacement. Like you can, uh, let's see, we can, we can't do that, right? So in, in some uh, graphical tools, some graphical tools, you can actually uh, start this and then uh, it will tell the possible components that come here, like in orange, for instance. Uh, but here we are saying uh, that we are going to do it uh, manually. So we, we are going to add the uh, rename by replacement. So you can see rename by example, rename by you know, so lots of other things. Uh, but I'm going to get rename by replacement. And uh, if I look at that, that says all and give some, uh, you know, what to replace. So uh, once I uh, link this, right? Uh, by the way, there's also help that is given for uh, each of these outputs, what they do, right? And the inputs, what they take. Um, so I can, um, uh, I mean, just for saving time, I will uh, replace all um, ATTs by attributes. Right? Um, and then um, I can, uh, it will say, ask whether you want, uh, if you follow this thing, it'll, uh, each of these places we can set a, a break point, but uh, we are, currently I'm just going to uh, continue, right? Um, then I said filter by, uh, sorry, uh, filter examples. So you can also filter attributes, right? Uh, so or may maybe, okay, maybe I'm, I'm not going to do this, right? Uh, I'm not going to, I'm saying, okay, I don't need to filter examples. I don't need to discretize. I'm going to straight away uh, do my validation. So I, I, I look for X validation, right? Um, the old thing was X validation, but the new thing is cross validation. So I'm going to do cross validation here, right? And um, sorry about that. Um, Cross validation, you can see this particular component uh, is a stack of components, right? 
and um, so that means I can zoom into this. And if I look at that, okay, it has two sections: cross validation, training, and testing. Right? Uh, and uh, for for the training, I'm uh, currently going to use naive bears. Right, so I'm going to say here naive naive bears. for my training data, right? And if I look at, oh, sorry, so maybe I can go back. The way I go back is yeah, go back here. Uh, I didn't look at the cross-validation uh, parameters. So you can see here, the cross-validation parameter says split on batch attribute. You can go and see here what uh, this means, right? Uh, if you're going to batch your data, um, and it says by default, uh, it is uh, uh, not true, false. Uh, what kind of, uh, if you leave one out, right? Uh, it says um, uh, you only uh, do the cross validation with one, right? So I'm not selecting that. Uh, I'm selecting uh, five, uh, 10 folds, right? You can do five folds and the 10 folds are the most common. Uh, I hope you know what cross-validation is. Right? If not, we can discuss that. Uh, and how you sample, right? uh, the default is automatic, but you can shuffle and sample, you can stratify and sample, or you can let the tool decide. And so now when we go inside this, we have type pairs, and you can see it just has Laplace correction or this is the smoothing. You can of course turn it off or on, by default it is on, right? And there's a small description about that. And so, so there are no other possibilities. Uh, we can of course have it without smoothing. So let's try it without smoothing. Uh, and once I have the model, I need to apply it, right? Uh, so how do I apply the model? Uh, I use the apply model uh, widget. Right. Oops, sorry. So I'm in the wrong side here. Um, So I use, I drag and drop the fly model in this testing thing, right? And now I need to actually have the model and the test data, right? Model and the test data. And if I look at the apply model thing, uh, it has uh, hardly anything here. So I'm not going to do anything there, but you can see uh, what can be done. And then finally, I need to uh, yeah, see the performance metric. Uh, the connectors, I'm, I'm not uh, explaining uh, right now, but uh, I'm trying to, uh, you can uh, see what the, each of these. So here it says, uh, 
you know, if you want to look at the model, then you, you connect this. Uh, if you want to uh, look at the example set, you look at this. Uh, if you want to see the test result, you do connect this. Uh, if you want to see the cross validation performance, you do this. Uh, so you can you can actually connect all of them, right? But I am currently connecting uh, only this. But you can also uh, connect uh, the examples and so on. So now. Um, uh, uh, what, what it's going to do is to do this uh, tenfold cross validation with nine bears, right? So how do I get it to run? There is a thing called run. There is a menu, but you can also click on this run. Uh, this uh, performance is not measured, right? So I need to. connect both my, uh, uh, okay, so I, I didn't uh, look at that particular uh, second connector. Let me go back to the beginning and run it. Oops. Okay, so this, uh, uh, it's uh, telling me exactly what is uh, missing. So this thing here says input example set must have the special attribute label. So now I go back, okay, when I was uh, setting my data set, right, I have not, oops, sorry, I need to go from the beginning. I have not uh, uh, told the uh, I have not said what is my um, uh, so so currently rabbit miner just knows um, all the um, uh, just a set of attributes right but uh, okay, so this is a good point at which to say, um, if I want to stop here, I can say, uh, insert a breakpoint after this, and it shows here in red, right? So now I'm going to run this, and it didn't run the whole workflow, it showed what it has got, and you can see it's still it's ATT12. Um, okay, so let me stop it, and... Uh, Go back, right? And I also have uh, in have a, have a break point here, right? So, so now if I run it, uh, this is um, basically how it's reading. And if I run, I go to the next break point, right? It says. Everything is now called attribute, right? Uh, but it turns out that uh, these are all just attributes, right? Now, this last one is uh, actually a, a class, right? but it has uh, no way to know, right? Uh, it has no way to know that it is a class, right? So here, if I go here, uh, I have to say that it says include special attributes. Special attributes are attributes with special roles, which can identify the examples. Right? So other than the normal attributes, uh, there can be some the, the special. So if I say include special attribute, okay, and let me uh, start again. So first break point and second break point. Yeah, it still doesn't identify that particular thing as uh, the class. So uh, that is where, okay, so I have forgotten how exactly this is done in 
rapid minor that's a good so, exercise uh, we use yeah. the set role uh, function to set the role as label uh, right okay so some of you have done this again huh? right so you inserted a set role here yes to set it as a label right good so if you um, i think there is another way to do this but um, as you uh, as you go um, you will find so we can do it when we are importing the data but ah that's right using the import wizard okay so here the, the attribute that is the class is attribute 16 if i'm not mistaken uh, and that's the only one that is the label. Right. So let me now, um, you can uh, remove all breakpoints. I need this. Oops, there was a breakpoint. Start here. Okay, so I have not connected the final result, it seems. Right, so it's not- The performance gives the percentage, the, the performer. In the cross-validation, the performance only gives the percentage. Okay, but this doesn't have it, right? Uh, no, sir, you didn't connect it to the uh, result. Ah, okay, great. Brilliant. So now, um, right, so here we can see now the accuracy um, is 65%. Uh, I hope you know how to read the uh, confusion matrix. So uh, class precision, class recall, and overall precision is given here, overall recall. Uh, AUC and so on. And then you say, okay, maybe this was not a great idea. Um, we need some pre-processing, right? And you can do those things, for instance, uh, filter examples. Right? Uh, and uh, I think um, discretize. By binning. So you can say, right, uh, by the way, if you are not you, you can have and uh, not use by highlighting and then say um, disable, right. So this will still run now, but if you enable these, um, then you can't run it without connecting. Right? It, it does the check, right? and it will say to connect these. So you can first try, OK, uh, let me try uh, only, uh, sorry. Uh, let me try only doing uh, filtering and the filtering I'm going to do is uh, you can add filters here. There are some custom things, right? So no missing attributes is one way. Right. So, right. So if I do this and now uh, maybe there was not such a big difference, right? Maybe there was a small difference, but not so much. So I'll say, right, I'm going to disable this one and uh, see what the effect of uh, discretizing is. Uh, 
<clears throat> and then it says, okay, there is an improvement, right? Um, and then I say, right, I'm going to, uh, if I do, sorry, uh, sorry, yeah, discretizing, I didn't, so, so uh, by default, it's trying to discretize everything, right? You can see what, okay, so this is discretizing two beings. Um, you need to do something a bit more uh, meaningful here, right? But the, there are only some, if you uh, at the break point here, you will see that only some require discretizing. So attribute two, uh, three, uh, eight, 14, 15. So you need to do something reasonable. And currently I'm just saying, okay, I'm, I'm just showing for the demonstration purposes. Um, if I do everything, um, okay, so, so it's not very meaningful, so it's not getting a very good result. You should be able to get some value in the 80s if you do good discretization and filtering, right? So it shows how important these pre-processing things are before modeling. And then you go here and say, right, okay, uh, what if I do um, decision three? Now, in, in some uh, graphical tools, you can have both these right, active, uh, but here I'm going to just uh, only make uh, the decision tree active now. Uh, and then, uh, so you can see, uh, just by changing that, oops. Oh, okay, this is having a break point here. Uh, so the decision tree, even with that naive uh, discretization has got a good score, right? Uh, and precision is also good, the recall is also good and so on. Um, you can check the AUC, right? I hope you have seen the, the meaning of the AUC, right? Um, so the, the closer it is to this uh, left and top walls, uh, we know the better it is. The closer it is to the medium uh, di diagonal, it means, you know, uh, it's almost uh, random. Right, so I um, just play around with this. Uh, you can now try other algorithms. Um, uh, so when you want to uh, do, when you want to explore, right, you can uh, look at, so modeling is the place you're going to look at now. And you say, okay, there are uh, the 167 out of that, 62 are predictive. 15 of segmentation, associations, six, correlations, blah, 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 right? So we say, okay, we want a predictive model. So lazy, Bayesian, then trees, there are nine tree models, rules, neural networks, logistic regression. So you can see how many, and there are 15 ensembles, right? Uh, voting ensemble, we, we will talk a bit about this uh, next time. Okay, so let me go to uh, this week, right? So I want you to, since you have already done data mining, and you would have learned about association rule mining. There's a, a 
kind of a task here. The, the task titles I don't like because actually what we are trying to do is to uh, figure out the business case for it, right? And that's what is given here. And the co common thing uh, is about this so-called uh, market basket. So there, there are supermarkets that have uh, products and you want to uh, figure out, you want to extract from the data set and you can see again the data set is, uh, the data set is also given in this, right? So in the VLE you will find the data set. Um, and don't just do the workflow, try to figure out this case, I mean, that's that's the more important. As we go on, okay, to give you an interest in the thing I'm jumping in without really looking at the data, but as we, uh, the, the real skill that you need to get if you're going into this area is to see a problem like this, explained by somebody, and then figure out how do I uh, model it? Okay, do I use naives or association rules or uh, recommend a system or whatever? Right. So I want you to. Uh, currently, you're not worrying too much about it because you're learning the rapid minor tool, um, and so to read this and understand it and then do it. And at this time, right, uh, there is, um, I want you to submit what you do. Right, so where is it? Um, So in your uh, VLE, you will see right at the bottom. Right, so Task zero was for you to do yourself. Some of you seem to have done it. Uh, today's slide deck is here. And then task one, just both the, the description and the data. Right? And you, you're, you're supposed to submit, right? Um, your workflow here. Right? Uh, so, uh, but I want you to think about it. And also, of course, please use this forum to discuss um, you know, possibilities, uh, can't I do this or can't I do that, right? Because it'll help everyone, not just the friends you talk with. Right. So, um, so we can take this in one of two ways. I can uh, put you in breakout rooms now till let's say 10 o'clock where I get you to try it. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So. It, it, it's up to you to figure out how you're going to use that time, right? And um, uh, it's as a way of helping you get started, right? So some of you may have not have downloaded the software, some of you may have uh, not um, done the first uh, task zero, but you can discuss all that among yourselves and then 10 o'clock we finish, right? So uh, I'm going to put you into five groups so that you, um, uh, just please everybody unmute and one person maybe share, the person who has the software share the uh, rapid minor screen and just start doing either what task zero or task one. And then at 10 o'clock, I will just um, 
uh, get you back into the main group and then we will discuss whether you had any problems. I think you have to accept uh, and go to that particular room. I see only one person has gone to a room still. So there should be three people in your room, right? Uh, and of course, I, I'm not trying to come into the room so you can discuss whatever you want. Uh, about the weather or COVID or anything, right? So uh, this is the equivalent of your own time, right? Um, so accept your, there should be a prompt saying, go to breakout room one or two or three or four or five. There are five rooms. Only one person has so far accepted. Sir, I, I don't know why, but I'm having trouble uh, joining the breakout room. Same here, sir. Same here, okay. sir. I accepted it. Uh, so you accepted, but you're not going. Okay, let yeah. me let me uh, try it again. I'll close the room and try it again. Looks um, like I have to wait till the, it takes one one minute to close the, the rooms. Okay. So one person was able to go, but nobody else was able to go. Okay. Let me try again. But yeah. So closing the room takes one minute. And one person actually went into the room. So she will wonder what happened. Okay, Romy, uh, sorry about that. Uh, somehow it didn't work for the others. So let me try again, right? Um, and let me know if it doesn't work okay uh, let me try to recreate the rooms um, so you will have to accept to go to the room okay let me see is it the same yes sir yes sir Okay, so it only works for Hiromi. Most likely, uh, I don't know that the I updated my uh, Zoom. Wonder whether that has some effect. Let's see. So again, I need to wait for a minute. Recently, there was an upgrade, right? Oh, yes, sir. The day before. Oh, yes, sir. Did, did, did you update? I think so, so yeah. yeah. Usually I skip, but uh, I update. I, I skip because uh, as UCSC, we 
kind of agree that we are going to all upgrade. Otherwise, we may have this kind of issue. So I'm wondering whether I upgraded accidentally. Um, let's ask Hiromi whether she updated and then we will know that that may be the reason. Anyone else uh, uh, updated their Zoom? I did, sir. Oh, you did? Okay. Let's try. Uh, Hiromi, can you hear me? Hello. Uh, Hiromi, did you update your Zoom? Um, I uh, joined a breakout room, but it was... Correct, just... correct. Yeah, yeah. Only, only you are able to join. The others are not able to join, so I'm wondering whether... I have accidentally updated my Zoom. Did you update your Zoom in the last week? Uh, I don't know whether the update was automatic. I, in, uh, as for my knowledge, I didn't do anything like that. Ah, you didn't do, okay. So then it can't be that. Um, I accidentally updated without waiting. Normally we update everybody at UCSC because once we had a big issue with this. Uh, so that may not be the reason. So let me uh, see. Uh, let's see whether I can, uh, what if I do it? I'll let, I'll create five breakout rooms and allow you to go into any room, but all don't go into the <laughs> same room, right? Let's see if that works. Uh, and uh, uh, otherwise we may have to uh, you know, figure out what's wrong. So I'm gonna create these uh, five rooms. They'll be all empty. I want to see whether you can go into any room. Uh, or, or maybe I can assign you, let me see. All right, let me see whether, so Yasas, if I, I, I put you to room one, see whether you can accept it. Ram Kumar, I, I put you into room one. Can you access it? Sorry, sir. Uh, just I, I say, I uh, no. Uh, once I create, uh, okay. So that doesn't do it. Okay, that doesn't that doesn't do it. Okay, so let let me try the one final time. You are getting the prompt, right? Yes, I got in the pop out, but I, if, I, if I put the joint, I couldn't be able to. Yes, so it's not, the button is not working. And you click join the button. Okay, button is only working for you. Uh, reset the dates. The dates should be before next Thursday. Right? So these are not assignments per se, they are tasks um, and for the week, right? Uh, let me just see. Yeah, so these are the old dates. Um, so I'm making it available in 26th uh, November. And um, so the, the next Friday is uh, the Third, if I'm not mistaken. Um, right, so that means you need to give it in by the second. Right, second December. So by the second December, which means, I mean, you won't take much time if you really 
look at the thing. Right? Uh, by the second December, you need to just upload. I'm, I'm not even saying any uh, to upload. I think I'm only saying to upload uh, the workflow and uh, don't make it exactly the same as what is uh, already there, right? Um, right, so, so this three of you particularly, if you have any problems with understanding association rule mining, uh, then let me know and I can probably point you to some place. Okay. Uh, we are mainly going to look at supervised learning. Uh, and then in supervised learning, something called ensemble learning, right? Which is uh, how to combine multiple classifiers. And then, um, uh, unsupervised learning. Uh, which again, those who did data analytics would have uh, had. Uh, uh, okay, let me get a quick uh, feedback on that. So for supervised learning under data analytics, you used scikit-learn, right? Yes. Right, so, so that's an example of a library. Now you're having an example of a graphical user interface. And in the second half of this section, you will have an uh, experience of a cloud-based environment. So you have all three major um, kind of uh, environments for analytics. Uh, a library based, a GUI tool based, and a cloud based. Right? Uh, and the primary focus is supervised, right? Supervised learning. In the data analytics uh, with scikit-learn, you would have done some supervised learning, and then you also done some unsupervised learning, right? Am I right? Yeah, we did. Sorry? We did. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to cover anything in reinforcement learning. Right? In data analytics, did you also do something on deep learning? Uh, we, we were taught the theory, sir, but we didn't do much uh, coding. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Let's see how, whether these tools provide an interface uh, and then the cloud environment. Uh, we will not look at, or we may, I don't know, uh, how you could use the code. Let me have a show of hands. Um, how many of you think you will also want to have, see how the library on deep learning works. Because the time is the problem, right? We have about five weeks, right? And to cover all that is a bit of a mess. Um, we can, uh, since in the graphical tool, those things are basically hidden in a way, right? Uh, because it will be just another component and behind that component there is a deep learning library or something. Uh, so I think I will skip doing using a library to do that. Right? Uh, and primarily, as I said on the first day, for this particular information systems, the more important thing is being aware and uh, of what can be done and uh, so uh, as a result okay with scikit learn you can do, do these these things with tensorflow you can do these things h2o you can do these things and you know k 
keras and so on, but also uh, to be able to do them, but without really using those libraries. And that's why it's more, almost more important that you have a handle of how this can work through a graphical user interface tool and in a cloud environment, right? Um, so that's what I will aim to do in the next five sessions we'll have. Uh, I think the updated calendar has not been given to you, but uh, it may be updated, uh, uploaded one of these days. We earlier were going to have your last semester's exams somewhere during this time and then uh, have your this semester's exams in February or something. Now we have moved everything to February thinking that we will be able to uh, handle the logistics better if both exams are on site, right? So there'll be one after the other. And I think we are gonna have the semester two exams first because you will be more familiar right, with the content of semester two. Uh, but uh, because we ha didn't have your uh, normal mid-semester break after seven weeks or eight weeks, we're having it after nine weeks, right? So next week to coincide with uh, uh, the ICTA conference, we only get five weeks after today, which is uh, not next week, but two weeks after next week, right? That takes us up to Christmas, right? So we will have two Fridays and then there's a break. I can't remember how many days, but over Christmas and New Year. And then we will have three weeks in January, right? So, and by January 25th or something, the semester finishes. So, so we have only five sessions more. Uh, I need to kind of plan this a bit better how, um, okay, so more, my current thinking is, because this was only, this re-adjustment was only finalized yesterday, right? So my current thinking is that uh, the next two sessions, that is not next week, but the week after next and the week after that, we will stick with this rapid minor environment and do some use cases in business analytics, right? Uh, so credit rating is a common thing, right? Uh, it's one of the most common examples. Um, uh, and it happens, let's say, if you go to a bank and apply for a loan, they will look at your profile and figure out whether to give a loan or not. Um, and increasingly machines are doing that, right? So you know, the human guy sometimes is also frustrated, he can't override it. In Sri Lanka still, this is not the case, of course. Um, or if you um, uh, apply for some kind of insurance, um, the premium is computed. So, so you can imagine the, the loan application example is a classification example, right? Um, so that is binary, uh, give the loan or not, right? It could be non-binary, right? So high risk, medium risk, low risk, and giving the, uh, the bank uh, the, the kind of the decision uh, to have an interview, right? So the bank has, when you walk into the interview, already the bank has, you know, high risk, medium risk, or low risk. And based on the interview, uh, they will say, okay, this medium risk person, I'm going to give them the loan because there is a certain circumstance, right? Again, an application of prior and posterior. So prior probability is that this person has a medium risk, but the posterior probability, because after the interview, you realize, okay, why that, you know, why he was medium and not high, sorry, low risk, 
was because of something that they are able to explain. Now, let's say the person didn't have a job, and so the, the last four, uh, uh, you know, of his uh, income were missing, and that's why it became medium risk. Uh, but they have just got a job, and uh, if they can give us the, the, the letter uh, showing that, we can, you know, push them up and give the loan. Um, Right. And that could happen even to a high-risk person. Right? Uh, in general, the low-risk person, you just uh, have a very brief interview and give, grant the uh, loan. The high-risk person, you have a very brief interview and uh, uh, refuse the loan and probably tell them why. Uh, the medium-risk person is the person normally you will either push up or push down based on uh, the, the, the facts in the interview. Um, so, so that same thing, you can imagine if it's a numeric prediction, right, can become a regression problem, can turn into the insurance problem, right? Uh, what's the premium you're going to charge this person based on their past history? Right? Um, so you can see this is uh, two sides of uh, a related problem. Uh, now, uh, the, the next common problem is this uh, uh, the problem that is uh, most commonly discussed in terms of a store or a supermarket, right? Uh, so, uh, and it is used to, uh, let's say, extract uh, hidden patterns, and that's why it's one of the main topics under data mining. Data mining gives you the idea that you are looking for hidden patterns, right? Uh, so association rules are, okay, those who bought this item uh, uh, also bought this particular item, right? Or those who bought these two items bought this other item, and so on. So, uh, I hope uh, you, uh, that's why it's important not just to look at, you know, the workflow and, you know, implement it, but to read the introduction. Absolutely important to read the introduction so that you know the use case. Right? In the real world, that's what you will be asked to do. You have a real world case and then you decide, okay, what kind of, machine learning or analytics can I apply? Uh, an important, uh, you know, so, so we will look at, at, at another problem where you may not even think it is an uh, analytics problem, right? And that is, uh, uh, if you're in uh, the IT department or something in the big company, right? Uh, uh, Walmart or something, lots of users, right? Uh, users mean employees, and may uh, come up with uh, problems like mouse is not working on my computer, or my uh, uh, computer doesn't start, or, you know, or um, um, uh, another use case is if you're in an inventory. It's a system, right? So people ask, okay, I need, uh, I don't know, a, a blue uh, PowerPoint pen, or I need uh, um, a ream of uh, uh, A4 sheets, or, you know. Now, um, in that situation, that inventory person or this help this person has to decide Okay, do I just give it or do I ask for some advice, right? Uh, so we are going to look at problems like that, some real world problems where you think that, okay, uh, this, uh, this is uh, not a analytics, there's no analytics in this. I just uh, give it, you know, if they have followed the procedure, I just give it or otherwise I don't. But how can analytics help in a, in a situation like that? Right. 
so that's why in a way this case understanding the case is almost the most crucial thing here the second most crucial thing is of course then mapping the case to the technique right and so that's what this week's uh, task hopefully will uh, give you right how to understand a problem and then uh, make it uh, okay sorry by the way please unmute and let me know when there's a thing like like so there's a, a guest lecture happening now so uh, please uh, attend that uh, any questions put in the uh, forum?